So today it's all about the Canon 5D Mark II. I've been using this camera since 2009, I believe. I'm gonna talk about some of the good things about it, some of the bad things about it, some of my experiences of using it, and whether or not it's still relevant in 2021. But to begin with, I'm just gonna show you some of the pictures that I've taken with this camera over the years. So here we go. So it seems impossible that it was 12 years ago that I got this camera. I remember it because it arrived the day before my second daughter was born. And you know how time flies, right? That up until then I've been using this 1DS Mark III and before that the 1DS Mark II, which are big old heavy dinosaur expensive cameras. And so when this arrived on the scene, it was kind of a bit of a revolution really. It was a small, light, much cheaper, DSLR that was just as capable as this and pretty much every other camera on the market at the time. And also it shot high definition video, <laughs> which was amazing and caused all kinds of disruptions in the industry. And, you know, led to many stills photographers becoming interested in videography and filmmaking, me included. I won't go too much into the video specs of this because I know that most of my subscribers are kind of really into photography, but I will talk a little bit about the video capability of this camera towards the end of this, um, of this video. So a quick overview, it's a full frame camera, full frame sensor, 21.1 megapixel sensor, which I've said before, I think is a bit of a sweet spot in sensor size, um, just about the right size so that you can do pretty much whatever you want with the file, you can blow it up into a nice big size, you can maybe crop it a little bit, but you, it's not so big that it clogs up all of your memory and needs huge memory cards and exposes all the flaws in your lenses, which some of the higher megapixel cameras can do. It has an ISO range which goes up to 6400, I believe, maybe even a little bit higher if you expand the, the, um, the, the speed. But the speed that I tend to limit it at is about 1600, 3200. I wouldn't really go beyond that because I like all of my files to be as clean as I can get for my clients. Probably with noise reduction software, you could go higher now with modern noise reduction software. So I've now moved on from this. I now shoot the Canon 5D Mark IV and Mark III and I'm looking at the Canon R system, but I still would not be too concerned about picking this camera up for a shoot. Pretty much sort of nine out of 10 of my photography assignments, I would be happy to use this camera on. I don't think many people would be able to tell the difference in the pictures. Okay, so let's talk about what's bad about this camera. I would said I'd use it on nine out of 10 of my assignments and I would if I had to, but actually if I had the choice, I'd rather not. And those reasons are mainly it only has one memory card slot and I like the security of having two memory card slots. Cards do fail, I've had them fail on me, and so that's an important thing for me. The second thing is, is that this camera is slow. It feels kind of antique-like when you pick it up in terms of its speed against more modern cameras. So the autofocus system is slow, clunky, and a little bit less accurate than the more modern cameras. The motor drive, four frames a second, it's not the snappiest thing in the world. What's good about it, <laughs> there's lots of good things about this camera. Firstly, is that it's light, 810 grams. I think that's even lighter than the 5D Mark III. And it's cheap. You know, you can pick one of these things up for like 300 pounds on eBay. And they're reliable. And I don't think shutter count or condition really plays that much of a, of a, of a big problem for cameras like this. They've just been, re they're reliable and rugged and tough. The weather sealing on this was good. This camera produces great files straight out of the camera. 
It's probably one of my favorite cameras for just not having to do too much post-production to the files. I don't know if it's rose-tinted glasses of looking back through time, but I'm, I have fond memories of capturing pictures on this camera and just looking at the back of the screen and thinking, well, it's, it's exactly what I want, and then not having to do any more work to the file, which is lovely. The dynamic range is okay. It's one of the first cameras where I really started to get involved in pushing and pulling the files around because there was enough depth in the files. Before that, there kind of hadn't really been that much depth. And so the dynamic range is okay, but the highlights, I think, are quite easily crushed still with this camera as opposed to some of the newer technology that's around. So, you know, dynamic range is okay, but not perfect. This camera was one of the first cameras that I had that had dust removal system inside it. Up until then, the, the big full frame cameras were a nightmare for dust. And you'd be continuously either cleaning your sensor or, or dust spotting in post-production. It took forever. And this camera, I think the 1DS Mark III had it as well, but I don't think it was as good. This camera had kind of an ability in camera to clean the sensor and it worked really well. So it was just lovely to have those clean files with the no dust spots or not so many dust spots on them. So is this still relevant in 2021? Well, actually, I think it is. I think for a lot of people, this would still be a reasonable camera to buy. You know, you have access to some great lenses. Um, it's probably not the best camera for someone that wants to shoot a lot of fast action if you're into sports or fast wildlife or um, things where you really want a faster motor drive or a faster AF system it will feel old but for some people that are just into kind of general photography I think it'd still be a good camera. I want to talk about the video because when this thing came out holy smoke there was like a huge explosion of all of a sudden you could shoot video and a guy called, a photographer called Vincent Laforet did a, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, and he did an incredible film shot with this camera, I think for Canon or with Canon when it was launched. And it really made full use of the big full frame sensor and the low light capabilities and the big wide aperture lenses. And it just blew everybody away. And so everybody became involved in the filmmaking scene, which then led to, it shot 1080p full frame, so a big old sensor um, at 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second, which was amazing. It's very cinematic, very film-like, opened lots of possibilities. And before this, there wasn't really anything that came close to being able to do that below a price point that was massively high. And so this really did open the doors of opportunity for a lot of people, but it was a bit of a pig to use. It was you had to be so careful over the movement of the camera because it was really basic and really kind of easy to break that file, which led to many people kind of Frankensteining these cameras with screens, focus pullers, stabilizers, uh, software hacks and firmware hacks and all kinds of different things to try and get the best possible image from the camera. It was a bit of a pig though, and it was really difficult to use uh, under most circumstances. But if you understand those restrictions, there's still something really rather charming about the basic element of this camera for video. That It has a microphone slot, you have to manually focus, you have to deal with everything pretty much on a manual basis, almost like old school filmmaking. And so long as you use it within the constraints of that and understand that, then it's still okay for filmmaking. And I'm sure that even today, there are many filmmakers making um, content with the 5D Mark II and probably no, nobody would uh, be able to tell that it, they're, they're shooting on a, on a 10 year old plus camera. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it has kind of allowed you some kind of insight into where we are with this, the 5D Mark II. I'm making these videos kind of, you know, I sit here in my office and I look around me at how technology is changing and how, um, you know, things are moving forward in the world of photography. And then I look back at my shelf of kind of outdated cameras and I kind of like to just, you know, look back into the past and share those experiences with others sometimes. So I really hope you enjoy it. Please do subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel. I'm sort of 
really enthusiastic about making lots more videos about cameras and photography and my life as a professional photographer. So please do subscribe and like and send me a comment if you have any thoughts about this camera or anything else photography related. It's a really small channel tiny and so I'm hoping to grow it but in the meantime it's lovely because it's actually a really small community and you know I've become quite friendly with some of the people that are commenting on my regular videos and it's really lovely to hear their perspectives and all of these things in photography are subjective and so it's really important that we all share our experiences moving forward and you know look back to the past where we've come from Look where we are today and where we might be going into the future with our photography and the technology and cameras and you know i want to do a few videos that really touch on what we're trying to say with our photography you know it seems that there is you know i've always said that photography has one side it is the is the technical camera stuff knowing your shutter speeds knowing your uh, technique all of those things you need to have that muscle ready to flex but the other side is also your creative side and what you're trying to say and how you're trying to say it and they need to be grown at the same time both of those muscles need to be grown at the same time so i want to do a few more videos about that so if you have any thoughts about that please do let me know i'd really appreciate it thank you very much for watching goodbye